So what we have here today is John Stringer. He is with the Tesla Takeover in the U.S. You've done how many now in the U.S.? Uh, three. We're having our fourth one in July 27th through the 28th. Oh, it is. It's that soon. I did not yeah. realize that. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what guest speakers do you have at this so, one? So this year we have uh, Franz von Holzenhausen. Franz is going to be yeah, there. Yeah, okay. the chief designer of, yeah. um, of Tesla. Tesla. He designed all the way from the Model S to the Cybertruck. And then um, the other keynote speaker is Jared Isaacman. He's a billionaire astronaut. He uh, did Inspiration4, which was the first private citizen um, space flight ever to the like you know orbit the Earth. Because uh, we're also going to be doing some SpaceX, and then we have um, like Kim Java and some other uh, amazing other influencers as well. So, um, those, but those are the two keynote ones that we have this year. So, your take on this event here? Did it exceed expectations? Um, you know, the funny thing is like. I told these guys, so I called them like nine months ago. So they, the Austria Club came to our event last year and got like a behind the scenes look at our event. Right. And, um, you know, we, we even had them get an opportunity to meet May Musk. And so they had like a, um, a really cool experience there. And so, you know, obviously, like when I called them, like in my head, knowing that Europe is landlocked, I mean, yeah. you can get here, like in California, I mean, you you know, you live in um, Arizona, but it's like, you know, you drive through California, it's like it could take you 12 hours from top right. to bottom. Here, you can go through 15 countries. I'm kind of exaggerating <laughs> like, here. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you, you know, everyone, it, you know, um, it's just easier to get around. And one thing I'll say, Europeans know how to just have a work-life balance. I mean, they're well, they vacation well. I mean, what, every August, they're just locked that whole month. Um, and so, like, you know, you see a lot of people here, you know, they're um, all a, a little older, and so they just have time to travel and do those things, right? Right. And so, um, I knew, I told them, so to get to the point, I told these guys, I think this event's gonna be bigger than ours in a couple years. Really? Like, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so I haven't talked to them yet about, you know, are they gonna do it next year? We wanted to just give it one year. Yeah. And we're still like half, only halfway through uh, the, the event. We have the Cybertruck coming tomorrow. Um, but um, again, this is, I mean, you, you guys saw it today. I mean, it was a thousand people. Uh, and the Austrians, these guys run an amazing production. And I came here, to, I came to this location two years ago to a silence rally. Um, an event and they just killed it like the execution here really? is just crazy so I built a very strong relationship with them uh, over I met them in 2019 at the owner the president owner summit in LA for test of presidents uh, for owners club presidents and uh, met them then they invited me about two years ago hosted me and my son here and honestly, it's just, um, you know, I, th I really think that if they want to, you know, we could continue to make this something special. You know? One of the things I noticed as I was walking around the event for the yeah. last, you know, day or two, um, there's such a strong passion here, yeah. which uh, is palpable. Yeah. And like you said, the variety. I met the Netherlands Club today. And then um, one of the Italian owners let me drive his roadster, for yeah, example. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a strong international faction here. Yes. And I think, like you, this has the potential to scale bigger than yeah. what we're doing in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Well, here, too, it's like, um, I mean, in the United States, clubs all kind of run differently and stuff, but the European clubs run um, a lot different and more well organized here in the U U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I can go to any country in the in the Europe, and I can call up the president and meet up with him and meet with other like-minded people, and they're fairly well organized, you know, the clubs. And so, whereas the states, I mean, you know, even Arizona, some of those clubs are just duds, right? Like they just aren't operating. Some of them are starting. Um, even in California, I mean, um, there's a lot, all the clubs are great, but there's some that are actually doing like really cool things, you know, like our club being one of them. Right. Um, and then other clubs that are just not doing anything. So it kind of just it just depends. Do you think? And I gotta, I'm gonna deviate a bit here. Yeah, sure. You you've talked to Elon. Yeah. I've talked to Elon. Yeah. Do you think that he had any sense that this EV revolution was going to take off like it did? 
I don't think he. I mean, he. I don't think he thought that Tesla was going to, to succeed, right? He thought it maybe had like a 10% probability of succeeding. I think he thought this company was going to fail. Um, but the, the same thing is he had the vision of what is possible, like building, starting the supercharger network back in 2012, and it, it being the next gas station. Um, so I think he definitely probably thought about it more from uh, you know how do we make EVs happen and what's the roadmap and what are the biggest barriers so I think he had probably more of the vision of like you know from a product standpoint but I mean I think it's still he's still uh, blown away by you know what he's what Tesla and he has accomplished. yeah you know? I tend to agree with you there I think it's very difficult um, people like him usually take things one step at a time yep. and there is a vision that you know is the goalpost however you've got so many transitions in between that uh, you know tend to sometimes um, set you off track yes. and um, I, I would be surprised if he ever were to admit and say oh I knew it was going to be this big all along no I mean um I'm, I'm not sure if you've uh, most recently covered this, but you know there's a big vote happening on yes. June, uh, June 14th. Is compensation plan? Um, you know, at the end of the day, a deal is a deal. In 2018, we voted to oh, with over 75% votes to give him a insane pay package that was not going to be attainable. Like nobody in their right mind thought that this company would become the largest automotive company in the world. And obviously they're, they're more than that now uh, with AI and robotics, but no one thought that, that was gonna happen. And now he, this guy hasn't been paid, you know, you're literally removing his pay. And sure, he owns, you know, what, 14% of the company. And, but to, to literally take, this guy was sleeping on the freaking factory floor. Um, and, you know, he would say, what, over 50 to 60 percent of all of the pain in his whole life has been because of Tesla. Like, this was all before all this stuff, like, it's happened. Mm -hmm. To do that, it's just been, you know, I would just make, uh, I would just assume it's just making him very frustrated. So, uh, you know, I think that needs to be cleared up and really, yeah. like, we need to just move on, right? And he needs to focus on what he does best, which is, you know, set casting vision, getting the right people in order to, to make stuff happen, help with the engineering and and uh, you know let, let's get autonomy figured out I mean we figured out electric vehicles but now we need to we need to do uh, what's next you know which is autonomy you know I'll talk about this a bit tomorrow during my presentation about the history of the Tesla Roadster yes. and our involvement but the thing that I find interesting is we work with a lot of companies been doing this for 40 years and uh, the, the degree of passion and um, the commitment to the cause with the Tesla employees, the early ones, is completely different than most companies. And somehow, the management team in early Tesla was able to instill that and or put a selection process in place to attract that kind of talent and do the team building that headed in that direction. Yeah, so, um, like I live in the Silicon Valley and you know, I'll be at a Tesla event and I'll talk to a Tesla employee. I'll be like, hey, you know, uh, how's it going? What do you do at Tesla? And, you know, like, um, you either look them up on LinkedIn or you ask them where do they go to college and they all are Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, Berkeley, UCLA. I mean, it's harder to get into Tesla than it is like Yale, right? It's, he does draw the best talent and the people that are working there are all very young, but they want to work with uh, the greatest engineer of our time and God that ever lived. And so um, you, I, you, I completely agree with you. Um, the work ethic of these employees is um, unlike any other company, right? They, they want to run uh, lean and small teams, but strong and technical. Um, I mean, they had, uh, I think it was, was mentioned today, but they had like, uh, Tesla engineers go to Twitter to edit and look and review their code to make uh -huh. sure that they were legit. Really? And yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like that's the that's the way. And you know, he ultimately ended up getting rid of eighty percent of uh, you know the Twitter employees at the time. 
And so, you know, he runs lean, uh, but he, he just knows how to build teams. Yeah. He would and rather a couple people versus hundreds and, you know, thousands of people because there's just becomes too much fat. Sure. And you know, the, um, the core mission is always um, very much in front of all of the people that work there. I was talking to a service center manager out in Glendale, Arizona about six months ago or so, and we were discussing the problems that we have with labor. It's very difficult to find mechanics slash technicians, we don't know what to call them anymore, that can work on electric vehicles because you need a couple of disciplines or skills that aren't inherent in the traditional master mechanics. So we were talking about how poaching is taking place because it's easier for new companies getting into the EV space to poach talent from other companies rather than recreate their own. And the comment that she made was, you know, it's okay. It meets the overall objective, which is a transition to sustainable energy. And you don't, you don't normally hear that from competitors. You know, they're very adversarial. And um, that was a very refreshing viewpoint that was offered by Tesla. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, um, uh, Elon even says this, right? Like in the Bay Area, there's kind of this joke that there's like negative employment because a lot of times uh, people are just stealing employees from one company to the other. And so, um, and they announced in the past, uh, I think two or three years, uh, even though they moved the headquarters to Austin, the engineering headquarters is still in California because, you know, the top talent is still there. People from all over the world are coming there. And sure, there's good engineering talent in other places, but you can't replace the Silicon Valley. And even after COVID, that became a reality, even with remote work. You can't replace the Silicon Valley. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's um, the people that you'll meet at Tesla that work there is truly... Um, you know, it's mind-blowing the type of talent that they're able to. No, the other thing I find fascinating is, granted, we've had a 10% layoff. For a company with 140,000 employees, that's 14,000 employees. I don't think I've found any that have been bitter. Generally, what they say is, you know, I enjoyed my stint there. I learned an enormous amount. Granted, I was working 60 to 80 hour weeks but my own personal development was a major part in staying there. And um, you find, usually in companies when you have layoffs, a lot of embittered employees. I don't find that with the Tesla staff that has been terminated. And of course, some of them are being rehired now as well. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, unfortunately, it's kind of somewhat common for layoffs to happen and then people to be rehired. Um, you know, I've had, I would say this round of layoffs, I had a lot more friends uh, at Tesla getting laid off. And, you know, it makes sense that they would do this layoff and invest uh, and potentially rehire those roles in AI, robotics, FSD, you know, all of that. And I'm not sure how much they're gonna hire back. Um, but I, I would say they're, it was a bit, it was mixed bag this time. Like they're definitely, everyone enjoyed their experience. But this time I actually saw employee, friends of mine that just quit, um, partially because they lost 10 to 20% of their organization and then they they had more workload, but they were already working 60 to 80 hours. Right, yeah. So I think at least this time, you know, in the past, that's kind of what I felt, but I would say layoffs are normal for Tesla. Every like two years, they do lay off 10 to 20%. That's just kind of what he does to recalibrate. So. Um, yeah, so I would definitely agree with you. Like, I think, you know, overall sentiment is people do love, like, and, and enjoy what they learn. It's um, a time of their life. Uh, but at the same time, this, this past layoff was, I think, it felt a little brutal. <laughs> well, when companies yeah. grow this rapidly, um, there is duplication of effort, yeah. as Elon points out. Yeah. And uh, like you mentioned, the term recalibration is definitely an appropriate one to use in this case. Yeah. But, um, well, we're honored to be here. Yeah. And uh, the Austrian um, club is, uh, you know, has invited me and uh, I'm, again, flattered and honored. It happened so that I was born not too far from here, Rosenheim, Germany. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Bavaria. And I was going to visit my brother anyway, so I said, this is an ideal time to participate yeah. in this takeover. Perfect. Well, yeah. glad to have you and uh, thanks for coming out and supporting the event. Yep. Thanks, yeah. John. Yeah, of course. We'll see you around.